I call Denise Roach. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> tēnā koe, uh, tēnā kouta katoa. The Green Party opposes this bill in its entirety, and it's ironic. It's totally ironic that the second reading of this bill should come to this House 20 years and one day after the Honourable Don McKinnon, on behalf of the New Zealand Government, signed the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. And yesterday, I remind the House, this House unanimous, unanimously supported this motion that the House note the 20th, 20th anniversary of the day that New Zealand ratified the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, UNCROC, the most well-supported human rights treaty in history, which commits this country to consider the best interests of the child in all activities and make children's rights known as a priority, and that the House recognise children as full, full citizens of our nation deserving of our most ardent attention to make a world fit for them to inherit. In 1993, we committed to bring our laws into line with this convention, and that convention applies to all young people who are under the age of 18. So why are we today attempting to pass a law that allows for some of our young people, those aged between 16 and 20, who may be on a benefit, to be discriminated against in their pay rates. The explanatory note in this bill says, right at the beginning, minimum starting out rates of wages are designed to support young people entering the workforce, including those who have been on a benefit, and young people who are undertaking industry training for their work. Starting out wages provide an incentive for employers to take on young workers at a reduced pay rate while foundation work skills experience on their job and training is gained. We don't believe that this bill will support young workers, Mr Speaker. What it is, is it's a new take on the carrot and stick approach. The employer gets the carrot and the young worker gets the stick. Paying low wages is an incentive for employers to keep wages low. The only incentive that young workers new to the workforce will get from this law will be the incentive to join the 50,000 or so New Zealanders every year who leave this country for Australia for better paid jobs. Certainly, in this bill, I see no incentive for a young worker to get a job, especially when they're going to be paid poverty wages. But then this bill is more in line with the government's approach to punish people, to punish young people, and especially young people who may be receiving state support. And that includes the young mothers and other young beneficiaries who are who now have less decision-making around their own finances, and it includes university students who are being increasingly shut out of allowances that would enable them to finish their studies. If we are looking at incentives in this bill, then we need to look at what this bill offers employers. And I agree with the Council of Trade Unions, who said in their submission that this bill will incentivise poor employment practice. There is a clear encouragement for some employers to sack young staff after six months, and they can do so at 90 days without any justification in order to get labour at a 20 per cent lower cost. The Council of Trade Unions was one of 529 submitters on this bill. Of them, only nine submitters were in support. Surely that tells the government something. Of those nine submitters in support, seven of them came from employer groups and industry organisations. That is, parties with a vested interest in keeping wages low. Among the 520 submitters who uh, were opposing this bill were parents, unions, community groups, charitable organisations, NGOs, the Human Rights Commissions, and hundreds and hundreds of young people themselves, and many of them submitted in person. And, I might add, some of them were not treated with the respect that they deserve by the chair of the committee. The chair of the... The select committee heard from economists. We had reports from economists, and there was conflicting evidence from economists. 
And I was reminded while I was looking at the evidence and the different opinions from economists that economics is not a science. There were even two submissions from employment, employer groups that didn't think this bill would help with the unemployment rate either. We could be doing more. <clears throat> As for the young people we heard from, they were <clears throat> excuse me, really worried about reducing the wages from one category of worker and displacing the work for others, for those in the next category of uh, age category, the 20 to 24 year olds. And those ones are at least protected at the moment by the minimum wage, which is very, which is poultry, I agree with Darian Fenton. And really, we didn't hear any concrete evidence or promises, for that matter, from employer groups that this bill would increase jobs. We didn't get that assurance. The way to get young people off benefits and into work is by creating jobs. Simply lowering the price of labour does not do it. Creating a low-wage economy does not alleviate poverty, and it brings absolutely no new ideas into the mix. It's been proven that the way to reduce the numbers of people on the benefit, and that's who this bill is targeting, is to get them into jobs. Jobs where they have a decent wage and that they can support themselves. In 1999, there were 160,000 unemployed people. By 2007, that figure was down to 17,000. Why? Because there were jobs. Forcing wages down under the guise of doing young people a favour by getting them into work, where, frankly, they will be exploited, doesn't help the economy as a whole. Doing something for the manufacturing industry in this country, where 40,000 jobs have been lost in four years, would help. The government could assist by diverting some of their resources away from offshore interests who demand law changes in exchange for a few thousand short-term and low-paid jobs into local industry that is struggling with the high exchange rate. The government could also help by ensuring that local companies got government contracts because that creates local jobs. We reject the notion that this bill is needed because young people are a risk to businesses. That is discriminatory. All, boss, all bosses take a punt on any new worker. We don't need this bill. We have sufficient legislation in place to mitigate that risk. That's what the 90-day rule is all about. It enables employers to deal with substandard workers and it reduces their liabilities. And for employers who are genuinely, genuinely offering training to young workers, there's already the training rate, which gives 80% pay rates to, to young workers in training. We could be doing more for our young people to get them into work and training. The government could instead be following the lead of the Mayor of Otorahonga, Dale Williams, who, is, who has, with his entire town, created a wraparound service that mentors and supports young people into work. This model is also working in Buller and it could work everywhere else too. And I note that the Speaker from the ACT Party, Mr. J the Honourable John Banks, was the Mayor of Auckland City Council and only one of two mayors in New Zealand during his, his term in office that declined to join the Mayoral Task Force for Jobs. That was a shame. And a stark contrast to this bill, it sends a really, really negative, a really negative signal to young people that they're not valued, that the government will not invest in them, and that the government is willing for them to be exploited and discriminated against. David Bennett.